Well, Cassidy is one of those kind of people that you 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 know it's it, he's so uh, such a, he was such an overwhelming um, trip. <laughs> Cassidy, I don't know. I, I, it's hard to even know what to say about Cassidy. He was so singular. I mean, it's just, well, for one thing, he was like the best, uh, the, the ultimate uh, sight gag person, you know what I mean? Physical comedy person, you know? Uh, plus, he was also the world's best stand-up comic, too. Uh, he had an incredible mind that he would do this thing. He did it to everybody. Everybody has reported on this. He did it to everybody. You might not see him for months, you know, and he would pick up exactly where he left off the last time he saw you, you know, like in the middle of a sentence, <laughs> he would pick up and you, you, first of all, you go, what, what the hell? And then you realize, oh yeah, this is that story he was telling me last time, you know, and <laughs> it was like so mind boggling. You couldn't believe that he was doing it. He used to do this thing that was this this was something that used to, that killed me, and I see it, saw him do it a lot of times. He'd take a, a dollar bill, you know, from anybody, you know, and take a dollar bill, and he would he'd he'd put his hand on it like this, and he he and they and he'd say the numbers, you know, the the serial number, and you know I've saw saw him get it right like two or three times, the serial numbers, you know what I mean? He just had this. He had this thing, you know, and his driving. Yeah, if you go for a drive with him, it was like the ultimate fear experience, you know. That you, you knew you were you knew you were going to die. You, there was no question about it, and it was something so unbelievable. He he loved big uh, Detroit irons, you know, big cars, and he he like driving in San Francisco. He would go down those hills, you know, like 50 miles and 60 miles an hour, and do corners, you know, blind corners going down those hills. You know, if you can imagine, like, going down uh, Franklin, you know, like, top speed, <laughs> you know what I mean? Re you know, disregarding anything, stop signs, signals, all the time talking to you and f maybe fumbling around with a little teeny roach, you know, trying to put it in a matchbook, you know, and also tuning the radio maybe and also talking to whoever else is in the car and it never seeming to ever put his eyes on the road ever <laughs> you know and this is like it would be you'd be just dying you know you'd be you'd be dying and, and he would it just it, he would he it would effectively take you past that whole fear of death thing you know it's like a, a difficult experience because there's nothing else like it apart from like almost like surviving the airplane crash possibly or something i don't know what but and i mean it, it was just so incredible you know it just his output you know what i mean uh, and he he felt he was he was the first person I met who who he himself was the art, you know what I mean? He was an artist, and he was the art also. And he was doing it consciously as well, you know. So he had he did things he he worked with the world. I remember one time after a a, a party or after the Watts acid test, which was particularly strange, and we drove the bus over to the Watts Towers. Uh, for a, a minute or two, and we got out and looked at him, you know, and we were, you know, it's dawn. We went over to Wavy Gravy's house, which was down in like, oh, off of Western, you know, way the hell off somewhere funny in Los Angeles. And they had a little house, and we had the bus there, and a bunch of us were sitting on the lawn, and we're all kind of crunched from being up all night, stoned on acid, you know, it's like the dawn is Sunday morning now. The dawn and and the bus is parked across the street from our point of view. We're on the lawn, and it's Sunday morning early, early. And uh, here's Neil, you know, and he's he's ripped his shirt off. He has no shirt on now. And now he's, he's no shirt, no shoes, and these these funky old chinos they always have. They're always like just about to fall off, you know. And he's first of all, he he George Walker is driving the bus, so George George is driving the bus. George, and and Neil is like the guy directing him into the parking place, you know, you know, a little to the left, a little to the right, he's doing it all with signals, and he, he directs him right into a, a stop sign, an arterial stop sign, and knocks it, it shears it off, boom, and the stop sign falls down. So then Neil gets up, so then, then the bus is parked, and Neil gets up and he's got the stop sign, you know, and he's like kind of trying to put it, make it stand up, you know. And so he's there with this stop sign, and down the street come like two 
really straight little old ladies, you know, and they're on their way to church Sunday morning, you know, and here's Neil, he's like the cosmic village drunk, you know what I mean, he's like, and he's got the stop sign, you know, <laughs> they're, they're trying not to see him, you know, and he's doing this whole, whole series of uh, kind of like, good morning, ma'am, <laughs> you know, kind of pantomime, you know, this extravagant thing all the time with he would kind of like stand up the stop sign and then walk away from it and it'd start to fall and he'd grab it just as I'm about to hit, you know, and he'd, all this stuff happening, it was like amazingly great. It was just beautiful, perfect timing, you know, and it's just extraordinarily beautiful, you know, and he, he, his, the way his body moved, the way he looked and everything like that was just absolutely, his face was so expressive, he would go through millions of expressions, just millions of them. And just this whole body language and everything it was so communicative. It was just amazing. It was I I, I was dying. I thought I was going to die. It was so hilarious. It was so and it, it was absolutely perfect. You know, it was like a little silent movie, a silent ballet. You know, in the morning, it lasted about maybe a minute and a half. You know, two minutes, but it was perfect. You know, it was like a perfect moment. It was just great. And I mean, Neil, Neil was that guy. I mean, he, he, he just could do that. You know, that's, that's who he was. You know, he was that guy in the real world. You know, he was this, this something. He was, he scared a lot of people. A lot of people thought he was crazy. You know, a lot of people were afraid of him. And a lot, most people I know didn't understand him uh, at all, you know. And, but he was like a musician in a way. I mean, if you're, he liked musicians. He always liked to hang out with musicians. That's why he sort of picked up on us and me and he, we hung out together a lot, and he liked he liked the company of musicians. When you were living in the Hay, was he around during that? Yeah, he was off and on. He stayed up in our our attic when we were in three seven ten. He had a little little camp up there, you know, with a mattress and his his old chinos, his old jeans and stuff like that were up there. And he would come in and hang out for a week or so every month or so, you know, every couple of months maybe, you know, he'd come in and uh, yeah. About the the Hay when you.